Hello everyone. The purpose of these videos is to introduce the students of ECE 2500 to the Xilinx integrated software environment. Instructions given in these videos should enable you to create a new project, create design files, run simulations on the computer to get output waveforms, and also to implement and download the design onto an evaluation board or the green board and work the switches, the LEDs, the buttons, and the seven segment displays to see whether your circuit is working or not. Now for this tutorial, the version of Xilinx that I'll be using is 13.1. If you're working with a different version, the layout of the software may be different, but the concepts are still gonna remain the same. The example circuit that I'll be using in this tutorial basically consists of two AND gates, one OR gate and one inverter gate. There are different ways I can enter this design into Xilinx, but as far as this class is concerned, I'll be working with only the schematic as shown here, or be working with a programming language called BHDL as shown here. Okay, before we go any further, let me just give you an overview of the software itself. I can open up the ISC either by the shortcut placed on the desktop or through the start menu. The resulting window is going to be called the project navigator. So from now on, whenever your tutorial says project navigator, I'm referring to this whole window. This is the view pane. I can switch between my implementation mode and my simulation mode in this. Down below that is my hierarchy pane. Now my current project and all the design files that are in that project are gonna be listed here. Down below that is my process panel. All the tools for each design files are gonna be listed here. As you can see, it's context based. So if I click on different files, I'll get different menus here. To the right of that is my workspace where I enter my design. Down at the bottom is my console panel. This is where my output messages are shown. And to the right of that is my errors panel. To the right of that is my warnings panel. Okay, so the first step when you do, when you come into the lab, is to create a pro new project. Since this is your first lab, you'll also be creating a directory where you'll store all your project files. So on your computer, go to C colon work and in that we're going to create a directory with our initial. So once you create this, all your projects in this semester are going to be stored in that location. So for example, this is another directory and you can see here all my project files in one semester are stored in that folder. Now, if you do it this way, then you'll make sure that no one's messing with your project files and you're not messing with anyone else's project files. To create a new project itself, uh, let's go back to Project Navigator, click on File, New Project, and in the location, type the location that I created my directory in. So it's gonna be work slash dn. For the name, choose an appropriate name. Since this is lab two, I'm gonna call this lab two. Be very careful with file names. Xilinx is very picky. You can only start with the letter and only alphanumeric characters are allowed. The only special character that's allowed is an underscore. There are no rename options. So if you mess up, you'll have to start over again. Make sure that the top level source is HDL and then click on next. Now in this window is where you select the device that you're targeting for. This device is basically the one that's on the evaluation board. So if I look at the evaluation board and if I look at the the chip on the evaluation board, I basically have to enter this information onto the device properties window. That information is also available in your tutorial. So the family you'll select is XPLA3, the device XCR3064, package PC44, the speed grade 10. Make sure synthesis tool is XSD. The simulator is model sim. The preferred language is PHDO. Now, once you set this up, the next time you create a project, these values are gonna be the default values. Of course, uh, if someone changes it, then the values are gonna get changed. So click on next and finish. 
Once you do that, an empty project is going to be created. As you can see, I don't have any design files here. I'll be showing you how to create the design files in the next videos. Now, if you want to actually target this project to a different device, I basically double click there and I can, my device property window opens up and I can basically select a new device if I want to target this to a new device.